Good. Now, we are moving into the retail energy business. Our next speaker is Pete Miller. Where's Pete? There. <laughs> Pete, Pete is correct, right? It's not, it's not Peter. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Pete is uh, well known in the, in the uh, European energy uh, world because he's co-founder and head of customer experience at Octopus Energy in the UK. Octopus is already also quite active here in Germany. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Spain and France and Japan and yeah. USA. So you started as a, <laughs> as a tiny startup um, um, working against the large incumbents in the UK, um, but you survived and today you have millions of customers. Absolutely. And brand is one of your ingredients and the USP. So we are happy to learn about this. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel like I now need to speak with the power of the gods, so hopefully I've got a bit of that in me. But uh, you, you all rock. We've got that. That's down pat, so good. Sorted. Um, thank you for the intro. I am Pete. Uh, for use, those of you who don't know Octopus Energy, we are a, a fairly young business. Um, we uh, have grown to be the second largest energy supplier in the UK. We focus on renewable energy, but we really focus on doing the right thing by customers. Um, we have won lots of awards, which makes us all very proud and very cool, but ultimately it's the feedback that we get from customers, I think, that kind of drives us day in, day out. Uh, it's been a fairly short eight years since we first started out. Um, back here, there was four of us kind of opening the doors in a little office in Hammersmith. None of us had any energy experience, but we all had an idea about what people wanted from their energy. And we also had an idea about how to use tech to transform business. And so we thought there was a real opportunity to do something, something different. And I think our customers, thanks Friedrich, by the way, for setting up that NPS is a really poor measure of brand. <laughs> after I prepared my slides quite clearly, but um, obviously this is a poor measure of brand. I wouldn't suggest it's not. Um, but Spain have recently uh, released their state of CX in, uh, in the UK. They looked at 200 different businesses across 12 different sectors. And the, N the Octopus NPS was 39 points higher than the industry average. It was the biggest difference of any, any industry they measured. And in fact, it was so the Octopus uh, NPS was so high that it made every other competitor below average. So I think that was a pretty good spot. Also, uh, this is a survey recently conducted by YouGov, and this is probably a little bit more meaningful in terms of a measure of brand performance, about whether customers could trust their energy suppliers. We conducted this survey during, or YouGov conducted the survey during the midst of the energy crisis, at a time when customers were really unsure, and really, in a lot of cases, quite negative about their, their energy suppliers. Um, you can see we performed really well with the vast majority of our customers trusting us, but also those results were higher than the trust, levels of trust of the government, the level of trust in the regulator, and the, reg the level of trust in consumer organizations to do the right things by people. So we're really proud that we've built a real deep connection with our customers, particularly in trust. And I guess people often ask me, well, what makes Oct Octopus different? How have you managed to create a brand that people actually really trust? And I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that we are still a small team. At the, at the global leadership level, there's only six of us, and we obsess over every single detail. Uh, I work alongside Chief uh, Marketing Officer Rebecca, so she and I are uh, a third of the global leadership team, we both work on the brand day in, day out. And I think that means you see and feel the brand at every single touch point you have. Um, we also don't operate like a typical utility. We're quite obsessive about doing things ourselves. So if that's advertising and marketing, that's all done by my team. We, we don't outs out outsource that. We're all very hands-on and very iterative. But that goes for our technology as well. We build that ourselves. Um, it also goes for our customer support. All of that is done by people who are representing and believe in the Octopus Energy brand. We have people who go out and knock on doors uh, to convince customers that Octopus Energy could be better for them. And those people are our employees and they're internal people too. And they really believe in the brand. And I think that makes a really massive difference. Another really massive difference is that every single person, regardless of what department you work in, talks to customers day in, day out. 
So if I'm sending out a million emails, my team will answer the customers that reply to those emails, which is a great way to make sure you've really thought about the contents of that email, because otherwise you're going to have a very long weekend answering customer emails. But that means we can think about the, the questions customers are ans asking and answer them before they've asked the question. I think taking this different approach where the brand is actually a real fundamental part of every decision you make allows you to find different opportunities to express the brand. During the energy crisis, we didn't feel it was super appropriate to be putting ads everywhere that kind of represented our brand. And um, I completely skipped a really good guide. Anyway, it's fine. Um, putting out ads that, uh, ads that really represent our brand because that was essentially spending customer money in a time when we could be spending money to help customers. And so instead, we took our ad money and we bought 50,000 electric blankets that we then gave away to elderly or vulnerable customers who were living by themselves. And we didn't do this with fanfare and with kind of, you know, a PR strategy in mind. We did it because it was the right thing to do by customers. And eventually, customers started talking about it. And then the national press wanted to talk about it. And then we had to find more electric blankets. So it was a self-fulfilling thing. But it sounds kind of quite counterintuitive that an energy company wants to save their customers from using more energy when they, when they don't need to. But actually looking out for the customers really helps us build our brands and, and uh, build a deeper connection. Uh, obsessing over the customer experience means there's other opportunities that arrive that might not turn up for, for in, if you're running your business differently. So for example, we had a discussion where one of the complaints customers kept saying was like, oh, the hold music is so annoying. Can you just change the hold music? And so now what we do is we play the song that was number one when you were 14 years old as your personalized hold music. And so it's, it's probably not going to be your favorite song of all time, right? But it's a song that you're a little bit nostalgic about, that you feel like, you know, came from a time when, when times are simpler and just a little bit easier. And it was funny, from the day we launched this, uh, the feedback overnight changed from, oh, I can't stand this hold music, to, oh, thanks for answering the phone so quickly, but can you put me back on hold? Because I was just getting to the chorus. And so, really, really transformative. And then, I also think when your brand becomes part of your everyday decision making, it allows your people to come up with incredible opportunities to deliver your brand and to and deepen the relationship with customers. So one idea that came out of our team, which I'm, I'm really f a fan of, was um, the, uh, the, the support team decided every single week they were going to send a customer a bunch of flowers. The only rule was it couldn't be trying to make up for one of our failings. It had to just be a customer who needed a bunch of flowers because of whatever was going on in their life, right? We all go through hard times, and sometimes someone needs a, a bunch of flowers. And the kind of stories that come out of this simple idea are incredible. All of a sudden, customers are going, well, I've never had any other business do this kind of thing for me, let alone I've never had an energy business do this kind of thing for me. Tiny little acts of, ki of kindness can be so influential in building a brand that really, really resonates with customers. And controlling and building our own technology allows us to do things differently. So another, another point of friction, uh, I don't know where you are, but smart meters in the UK, maybe about 50% of households have them. And so about 50% of our customers actually have to submit meter readings to get an up-to-date bill that's accurate, which is kind of frustrating because you don't know where that smart meter is. Sometimes it's got a key that's locked, you know, it's missing in the kitchen drawer. When you get out there, there's spiders and it's raining and it's, it's all a bit horrible. Um, and so because we control the entire customer experience and we build our own tech, we're like, we can do things that are a little bit more rewarding. So now when a customer submits their, their meter reading online, they get to spin a little wheel of fortune and win up to 512 pounds credit instantly onto their account. And it seems like a, in fact, it was just a fun little thing that we've decided, well, that would be a di bit different. I haven't seen an energy supplier do that before. And yet, when I look at the analytics for this little baby, I know that there is hundreds of thousands of people spinning this wheel on Christmas Day each year, which is, I mean, fair enough, 
Christmas Day is not the most exciting day of the year, but people would rather spin our little wheel than hang out with their relatives, which I think is, uh, is kind of amusing. But I guess the bigger question is what? What is all this for, right? It's, it's nice to be growing, it's nice to have customers joining and few customers wanting to leave, and it's no doubt it's good for our underlying business. But when I think about brand, I think all of us here have an incredible opportunity to change behavior and to make people think differently about energy, and that's ultimately part of the energy transition we need to take customers through. So, um, Saving Sessions was a program that we ran uh, last winter in the UK. It's a demand-side response mechanism where when the grid is really congested and there's not enough generation and there's too much um, people wanting to use electricity, it gets really expensive to, use, to generate the electricity. Often we have to fire up coal fire plants and that kind of thing in the UK. Um, and so we pioneered a a system with the national grid where the grid would tell us in advance when the grid was going to be congested, we would inform customers, and then they could get paid for using less than their average consumption in a one hour, in a two hour window. And a lot of the kind of typical thinking in this area is this just doesn't work. Consumers are not predictable enough to engage in demand side response. They're not, there's not enough of an incentive for, to let people do it. And yet, we had 700,000 customers sign up to be part of the program, which is well over half of our eligible customers signed up. Um, altogether, we shifted more than two gigawatts, gigawatt hours of electricity consumption. And even better, we got to pay customers over five million pounds onto energy bills while preventing coal gas generation from firing up to support us in times of congested grid use. And I think that's what's really compelling. That's when brand really kind of comes to the forefront because it allows us, if we're a trusted business, to get people using energy in new ways and to try new things. And when I think about the challenges of climate change and the, the reality of how important our businesses all, all are, I think this is the stuff that makes it really different. You know, we've built a soci society where Abstract concepts regulate our behaviors every single day. It might be money, it might be politics, it might be social standing. But I think you take money and you take tribes, maybe third in the list of the most powerful concepts is brands. And yet the power of brand has not really yet been properly used to engage cons consumers in the really important changes we need to make to our society to make it a properly renewable, energy-driven society. So for me, I think that's the really compelling part of the, creating a brand that consumers can trust. And that's me. That's Octopus Energy. Thank you.